slides you want to talk us through to start? Uh, yeah, well, I mean, how do you envision it going? Because I had a deck I was going to go through and then... Look, so then what we'll do is let's go through the deck and you can go through that and talk us through. Um, the. I'll keep an eye on the chat room. If anyone's in the room and wants to ask a question at any time, feel free to uh, pop it into the chat and I'll interrupt you, Seki, and we can um, hear the, That's uh, perfect. the discussion. And then also we've got a few questions from people who... Um, uh, who who um, uh, registered in advance for the session? So there's a couple um, of questions that we'll throw in at some I'm point. I'm prepared as well. for those ones. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Okay. Great. And the slides, just to show you, they're they're you know I'll introduce myself. Uh, they're extremely uh, brief. The idea is basically just to roll the conversation. Um, I'm happy to uh, yeah just basically put it up on the screen. Uh, actually, these slides are relevant to a lot of the questions that were um, Great. answered. It's just those Let, two. Well, let's get started and we'll, um, and uh, I'll keep an eye on the questions. So anyone okay. in the audience, feel free to uh, drop a question in chat and let's get started then. Oh, okay. Uh, so we're going now. Yep, we're live. All right. Well, hello to everybody who watched our prep. Thank you for joining. Um, yeah, so welcome to the chat, the, the talk on managing your API traffic, the road to load management and API monetization. So I'll introduce myself and then I'll let uh, Mark uh, say his hello. Uh, so me, my name is Sudgi Abushamala. Um, right now I'm a technical lead uh, for the Americas region for Tyke. Uh, a little bit about Tyke in a second. Uh, my background is a software engineer. And so, you know, feel free to make your questions as technical as uh, as they want to be. Um, I have uh, the privilege to talk to developers and, you know, architects and, and people that are a little bit more strategic. So um, we, we can kind of talk through all parts of the uh, the API lifecycle. And of course, there's my email. It's just my first name at tyke.io. Do feel free to reach out if you have any questions for me whatsoever. So yeah, uh, apologize. Uh, so Mark, um, a little hello from yourself. Hey there, yep, thanks, great to be here with you. Um, I'm excited to hear what you're talking about. You were saying you're the technical lead for the Americas region. So what that covers everything from Mexico to Brazil or? Uh, and all the, well, all the way down, it's, uh, it's from, from, the, from the bottom of South America to the tip of Canada. Um, oh, okay, right. Yeah, you, no, not a whole lot of clients in, in Northern Canada. Uh, myself, I'm located out of Toronto, so. Uh, if anybody is watching as a Canadian, you know, feel <laughs> feel free to reach out. You know, uh, Alaska, we we don't we don't um, discriminate here. So, <laughs> yeah. So, um, essentially, my role is to help companies architect their API management uh, platforms. Uh, so, yeah, it's a lot of fun. Uh, so, let's get right into it. Um, the agenda that we're going to cover today, for the most part. Uh, it, it's we'll, we'll keep it broad and hopefully let the questions drive us. And Mark's going to interrupt me with your questions, so please do drop them in the uh, the chat um, as well. Mark, you can talk about the the questions that come in uh, in advance. So, yeah, we'll talk about API management. So, without further ado, let, let's start there. So, what is API management in a nutshell? And I promise I'll only give you the fifteen second explanation, so as to not bore everybody to death. Um, API management is uh, largely about centralizing control of your API program. So what does that mean? It's it's you, uh, uh, an employee at a large company, um, probably you as the audience, you, you're a developer or a solutions architect um, or a manager of sorts that manages technical resources. At, at any one point, you, um, you belong to a silo in a, in a large corp for the most part. And so what API management platform aims to solve is the connection of you, your team, and every other team. It's allowing you uh, as, as a company, not as a unit within that company, to build an API ecosystem. Now, what does that even mean? So imagine that you're putting out a product. Um, and uh, and so you as a team, you're you're agile. Typically, you're moving quickly. You have your your mandate, your MVP that you want to work towards. And as you build out that product, you have APIs that you need to 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 either build or consume. And API management is all about the collaboration. It's about sharing your APIs across different teams. Imagine that there's an API built by a different team, and uh, it's one that you can actually reuse. Well, 
uh, API management makes that largely available. It's about centralizing the API ecosystem across an organization. Uh, a lot of the time, though, if you're thinking to myself, well, I'm not a large org, do, will I still get benefit out of API management? Absolutely. Uh, for all the for all the details we're going to cover, we, we get lots of startups coming into our door that say, yeah, we need API management. We have APIs, we want to sell them or we want to uh, secure them. And so API management is going to give you the analytics, the access control, the monetization, the developer workflow. So um, yeah, the problems that API management solves as a whole targets both small and large companies. Free versus paid APIM. So there's a whole host of open source tools. So with Tyke, we pride ourselves on being open source first. Uh, before we were a company, we were an open source API gateway. Um, we still have that same API gateway, and it's the same product that's built into all of our... Um, it's So we use the same gateway across the board. Our SaaS, our enterprise take-home model, it's all the same API gateway that our CEO uh, started as open source six or seven years ago, and it's the, the same gateway that will be free forever. Um, yeah, uh, and so you might be asking yourselves, what's the difference between the free and the paid one? Well, typically, and this is not just with us, this is with a lot of vendors out there, the open source bit, it's it's just the API gateway. An API gateway you can think of as a Swiss Army knife. It has lots of tools, um, but that's all it is. It's a tool. It, you you You... Uh, place it into your infrastructure to solve a point solution. And that's an API gateway. And API management is more about what we talked about just a second ago. It's about the orchestration of APIs across your organization. So it's really, it's building on top of um, the tool that the API gateway is. And so some of those tools are uh, um, a developer portal where you can publish your APIs for discovery. Uh, an API lifecycle management as a whole. And so we'll talk about the software development lifecycle in general. Analytics, right? So we want to know how our consumers and developers across our org are using our APIs. And then, of course, uh, API monetization. Hello to the new joiners. So that's API management in a nutshell. If you have any questions, please do drop them, and Mark will interrupt me and, 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 and bring them back. Uh, so without further ado, let's talk about API security, right? So um, a crucial part of building APIs is securing your APIs. Typically, your APIs are um, are public facing, right? Um, or they're um, they're built for use internally. But you know, at the end of the day, we have to lock down our APIs. We can't just give them access to everybody globally. Uh, and so there's many ways uh, to do that, but just we have to, of course, be on the same page and agree that API security is one of the primary function of an API management platform. So, right, API security, how do we do it? Well, there's so many different kinds, right? There's uh, just to list a few here is basic authentication, a username and a password. There's an opaque token. Um, JWT is one of the most popular forms of authentication and authorization uh, that we see. Uh, and then OAuth 2.0, there's SAML, OpenID Connect, and so on and so on. And, and they each have their uses. Some are better fit for some use, case, uh, use cases, and some are better fit for others. And we can kind of talk to you about best practices and that kind of a thing. Um, right. And so a lot of these are built out of the box. That's what you would expect with an API management tools. And it's, it's what we like to call as uh, table stakes. It's what you would expect as API management is the ability to either offer these out of the box or seamlessly integrate with your um, authentication um, model of choice. Now, uh, so let's go back to where, where I'll give you an example of why API management is important. So we talked about centralizing API management. So we're we're, we're all employees here at Acme Org, and there's 500 of us, and that's um, that's 10 teams of uh, 50 developers. Hopefully not, maybe 100 teams of five developers. Uh, and so uh, us as a team, we're building our APIs in isolation, typically. Uh, we choose the best tools, the best language, the best frameworks for the job to get to get the job done. And so what typically ends up happening is that each development team has their own ways of doing stuff. Uh, teams between each other can have different authentication types. They can have different protocols, such as REST, uh, gRPC, and, and so on. And so with all of these variations, we introduce a lot of complexity. Imagine you as a developer wants to consume another developer's APIs from a different team. Well, at least now we know that they exist. This is step one. But step two, it's now complex, i.e., uh, I have to figure out how to consume your API. 
So one of the benefits of the API management platform is it gives you the ability to, um, what's the right word here, is to is to mitigate that. Uh, so basically on the back end, we let developers use whatever authentication type that they want, but on the front end between the consumer and our API, the API gateway is essentially a facade, which makes it so that you can have a unified way of consuming your API. So regardless of what's happening on the back end, uh, protocol and authentication type, we offer the ability to uh, to simplify that and make it make it very easy. Pausing for a second. No, unmute for Mark. We'll keep going. Authentication versus authorization. Um, so authentication versus this. Is, so imagine you are going into a bank um, and you ask to see. So I'm said, yeah, I want to see Mark's bank account. And so the teller will ask me, okay, do you have any ID? And so I give the teller my ID and and, and he or she will take a look at my uh, ID and say, okay, so you're said, that's verified. That's the authentication. I've proved who I am. And the next step is for the teller to uh, to to authorize that I said you have access to Mark's account, which I don't. So those are the two parts of it. And both of them are extremely uh, important um, in terms of API security. And though it's um, a cause for debate, uh, it's uh, I hold the opinion very strongly that they are both the role of an API gateway. Um, right. So both this is who I am and this is what I can access. This is things that an API gateway should be able to provide out of the box. So what are some of the mechanisms in doing that? Uh, open policy agent is a very, uh, I don't wanna say new, it's a, it's a few years old now, but it's a, it's a pretty robust framework that it was built as an open source um, tool to solve that problem specifically. IAM, so uh, an identity access management tool, and there's lots of them out there. So, you know, Auth0 and Keycloak, um, AWS Cognito, there's uh, Glue, GLUU is a fantastic one. Uh, and, and a lot of these are open source, but uh, there's tools that are purpose built for managing your, um, your, your identities across an organization, whether that's internal employees and developers or external parties and consumers that want to um, that want to you know come into your ecosystem, and so with Tyke or um, hopefully other I can't speak to other API management uh, vendors, but if um, if they're worth their salt, they'll allow you to integrate with uh, your IAM solution off the shelf because IAM is a whole uh, world of its own, and so you should absolutely have the ability if you wanted to to bring in your IAM tool and integrate it into your API management platform, and then have the ability to basically. Uh, dictate authorization at that level and just have your API gateway, hopefully Tyke, um, be able to work seamlessly with that. JWT claims is it's really, it's an extension of IAM, but perhaps not. So imagine you have a JWT token and it, it's it, there's claims that are contained inside and they can be business logic, such as bronze or gold tier, or it can be a username. And you should have the ability to authorize based off of those JWT claims. Mark? Great. Yeah, just two quick things. One, could you click back on the present button so that we um, get the Ooh, larger? That's what happened. Version. Absolutely, you got it. Just, uh, just it's easier to read some of the text. Thanks. You got the, it. Um, uh, and then the other thing is, so I've been hearing a lot about role-based access control. Is that part of IAM, or is that separate? Is that a separate functionality? That's a great question. Uh, so we could drill down into this forever and there's so many follow-up questions that usually have um uh, my role at tyke is is a I'm, I'm really a sales engineer so i sit down with customers who ask me these sort of questions all the time uh so role-based access control um has a couple different elements right so there's uh, generally there's two answers to that so us as an organization we offer api management to our employees and then there's the there's the notion of RBAC, um, role based access control RBAC, to uh, so within so within our API management platform, uh, these developers access these APIs. This uh, business analytics person can only see analytics, not edit APIs, and that kind of a thing. And then there's the notion of RBAC, very much relevant to the conversation just had about authorization. So this API consumer can only access this set of data that belongs to them. So uh, yeah, there's a couple different notions to that. And uh, yeah, go ahead, Mark. Yeah, no, that's great to um, be able to understand that differentiation. And then, so you've got here, does business logic belong in the API G? 
Do you mean, yeah. Yeah, does business logic belong in the API gateway? So this is, um, <laughs> we end up having philosophical conversations all the time about the role of an API gateway. Because uh, as a pattern, it's only a few years old, uh, maybe seven, eight years, so not a few, but point is best practices are still evolving. And so the question that we get asked routinely is does business logic belong in the API gateway? Uh, and you'll get a different answer depending on who you talk to. It is my opinion um, and uh, of a lot of people's that know an API gateway um, should not store any business logic to, to an extent. And let us, let us talk about that. So, um, why should you not place business logic in your API gateway? Well, you know, one of the arguments is vendor lock and you don't ever want to become too entrenched in, to any one technology. You, uh, it's a good to stay as nimble as possible, especially because the average lifespan of any new technology is what, a year these days? I'm being hyperbolic, but you know, the point being made is um, you want to be agnostic to any technology, whether it's an API gateway or a cloud, you, uh, you, you want to be nimble. So that's the first argument, but at the same time, you, you, uh, you know, you might be thinking to yourself, well, authorization isn't there technically a business logic aspect to it. And what do I mean by that? So we are a restaurant. Um, actually, no, so we're, a, we're, a, we're a hospital and we offer healthcare and we allow our, uh, patients to, uh, log into our application and view their, their details. And so, um, the API gateway might authenticate and say, okay, so this is Bill and Bill has requested access to their information, but um, now Bill has, is, act, uh, is requesting access to another patient's data. And though this is used by the same API, this is a, a different set of data that the, the backend is responsible for. And so you might ask yourself, okay, so the API gateway is delegating access to endpoints, but can it inspect a payload and and figure out who's asking for what and whether or not that they're allowed to. And so that's really the question that's being asked here. Um, and and uh, there's so many great tools, um, like, like I mentioned, the IAM solutions off the shelf that really tackle that. Uh, and so it's it's my idea, it's my opinion that, uh, of course, you should absolutely do that to a degree. You don't want to bake too much business logic into your, into your API gateway, but to have, uh, let's say, a redundant security mechanism to to, to prohibit you know restricted access to data um, at the API gateway, which is essentially a, the front door into your e ecosystem, why not? Um, I would even go a step further and say in a, in a very secure environment, let's say healthcare or finance, uh, then uh, I would have that security in multiple locations. I would have it in the API gateway, but I would also bake it into my, uh, my backend APIs and, and microservices and such. All right, where is my go next button? It's, there it is. Okay, API monetization. So a big element to um, to building an API management uh, ecosystem is that so you can eventually uh, monetize your APIs. And there's a couple ways of doing that. There's the API monetization uh, aspect of actually selling your APIs uh, and receiving uh, money and in exchange allowing access to a subset of your APIs. The other aspect of monetizing your API is a little bit uh, less tangible and that's the element of uh, exposing your APIs for public consumption and then uh, in indirectly uh, being able to, uh, to generate revenue off the back of increased adoption of your, uh, of your products. So imagine, this is a real world example. So we have uh, insurance companies that uh, come to us. We, we did a webinar with uh, our branch. They're um, a very disruptive insurance company here in the, in the States. Check them out. They are, uh, they, so they're building their, their product as a technical product first. And with that comes APIs and they're using Tyke to, to publish and secure their APIs. And so um, they're not necessarily selling access to their APIs. But what's happening is that they are uh, having developers build applications on top of their APIs. And ultimately, they're going to sell more insurance. So there's a couple of different elements of API monetization. So it's not, I'm not just directly talking about selling it, but that that is gonna be a focus of what we talk about. So let's talk about what makes API monetization successful. Mark, remind me please, are, are, are we finished at one o'clock here? I want to know what time to finish. I think so. I think so. I see you scrambling. I apologize for putting you on the spot. I'll keep going, and you can you can interrupt me in a second. 
We're actually we finish up at um ten to one actually. Oh yikes! Okay, yes, well so, it's time to yeah. move very quickly. Okay, um, <laughs> this is a good topic though. I mean, it is a topic that a lot of people want to hear about. What's your um? So out of these here, you, you've got mm -hmm. a few points with API monetization. What's um? Can you give us one of your key takeaways out of this? Yeah, absolutely. So API monetization, um, it it wraps back into API management as a whole. So it's centralizing your processes. When you have a centralized hub, developer portal, for example, you have a single uh, stop where developers and consumers can go to your API, uh, to your API catalog, check out what's available, uh, and and then see what's there. Um, and typically, a free tier is very important. They should have the ability to automatically start playing with it, and you know, get getting the brain juices going and seeing, oh, this is really cool, and here's what I can do. So you want um, you want that to be very easy. You want them to be able to self service, uh, have access to a free tier, and then you want to provide excellent documentation, typically in the form of Open API spec or Swagger. I mean, if you're using uh, GraphQL, then a GraphQL Playground, all of that is available on, on the Tyke developer portal out of the box. So that's very important is the ability for a developer to not have to talk to anybody. If your only call to action on the website is book a demo, you're going to lose customers and sales. So make it easy for developers, even indie developers to get started for free. It hopefully doesn't cost you too much. Uh, and, and that's one of the most important elements is just keep it easy for developers to, to self-service. Um, I do see a custom uh, question here. We use our own custom authentication logic for our APIs, so none of it is standard out of the box auth options. Could we still use Tyke for securing our APIs? Yeah. So with Tyke, you could actually uh, you could write custom um, authentication plugins and inject them into the API gateway, and they could actually run as part of the binary and such. And you can do that in GoLang and Python, JavaScript, Lua, or even gRPC. So gRPC, Node, Java, C Sharp, .NET, etc. So yeah, you can absolutely do that. And it's it's, it's very common practice because a lot of people um, have legacy API uh, security uh, considerations that no out of the off the shelf solution will um, will be able to provide. So of course, that's, uh, that's something we do out of the box. Okay, um, yeah, Q&A, uh, I sped through that. Was there any more about uh, that you wanted to hear about, Mark? I think it was just great. I mean, it ties back into what you were saying earlier about like, you know, building out the ecosystems and like that, um, your comment then about the self-serve and the free tier plan, it just enables that that ecosystem growth because people mm -hmm. get to start thinking about the different use cases that they, people need to test things around to mm -hmm. get a sense of the potential use cases that they could build with that. And also if you're talking ecosystem, um, fostering an ecosystem, they need to be viable businesses. So they do need mm -hmm. that free tier to ramp up to That's get right. to the point of commercial um, pro product, don't they? Absolutely. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. <clears throat> Is there anything around how do how do people, you talked about, you know, it doesn't need to be direct, um, you know, like so the insurance example you gave, it's non-direct um, uh, revenue generation because it's like customer acquisition almost. Mm -hmm. how, is there any... Um, how are you seeing some of your customers decide which path to go down as far as when to monetize directly in API and when to um, look at, uh, you know, when to sort of uh, look at those indirect mechanisms? Oh, that's a great question. It's it's highly dependent. So um, you can, as soon as your APIs are secure and, you know, you feel good about that. And I mean, that's an ongoing thing. It's not like, a, it's not a zero to a 100. It's, it's an ongoing thing. Once you feel comfortable enough to expose your APIs, you're good to go. It just depends, um, you know, what the strategy is for the company is, is the strategy right now to publish APIs to increase revenue, or is it to get a product out the door and focus on that? Because that's, what's going to be a larger source of revenue. So it's, it's highly dependent. I, I would say. Wow. That's cool. So you so it does relate to what is your business goal? What is your business strategy? Absolutely. And then Absolutely. and then that will help guide you. What about where does the role of um, analytics come into, like, you know, you t this analytics for mm -hmm. helping you identify some of your security risks, I guess, but mm -hmm. also there'd be analytics in just use, but then also analytics in this um, same, you know, like um, the monetize in the monetization, like do people constantly stop trying just below the end of the free <laughs> tier or like what well, well, how do you how do you um connect your analytics insight to your other aspects of your api management 
That's another really good question. So, um, yeah, so analytics really are just a way to keep your, uh, there, there's two parts of it. It's just a way to kind of keep your, your, your finger on the pulse uh, to see which APIs are being consumed. Maybe you can dedicate more resources to that. But really, uh, the value that it provides is being able to monitor your APIs. So to figure out, okay, so what? how many errors are, are being returned by each API? What are the, the payloads should I need to if I need to debug something and that sort of a thing? So, um, I mean, I could be biased because I'm speaking uh, from the role of an infrastructure person. If I was uh, maybe, say, the CFO as opposed to the CTO, I'd, I'd care more about the actual numbers of, of usage themselves. So it's highly dependent on, again, uh, on your on what it is you're trying to accomplish. But as an infrastructure person, as somebody who's generally involved in the uptime and availability of the API management um, ecosystem, I'm more concerned about the, um, the, the value that it provides in terms of debugging. That's fantastic. Uh, really great conversation. And thanks for walking us through um, so many different elements of like API gateways, API management, um, the potential there. I've got a ton more questions, but we, um, we've we run out of time. I can't believe it went so quick. It was <laughs> really great to uh, hear from you here today. So, enjoy so uh, thanks everyone for joining us. If people do want to get in touch, touch seg here what's your do you want to put your email back up yeah absolutely i want to put my email back up uh, there we go this one at the bottom okay cool so get in touch um and thanks very much for your time today and enjoy the rest of your api days conference thank you mark thanks everybody for joining thanks everyone ciao Whoa!